Sweet little things, aren't they, sir? Innocence of you. One of them yours? Say which one? She looked like you. No, I'm just passing her. Really. Just passing? Well, according to the complainant, you've been standing here for about half an hour. Not complaining. It's how's we live in, sir. Neighbourhood watch. Calls we get in. Still, I have to go through the motions, though. Let's have your name. Davis William H. You got any ID? Not on me, no. Phone number? something here. Two days ago, we had a visitation. I asked you not to mention it to anyone inside or outside this office, not even our colleagues in the police national unit. I have now consulted our masters in Millbank, and here is their decision. As far as this service is concerned, Neil Byrne never existed. His records have been erased, and officially, we have no interest in the man. He never worked for us. And unofficially? Unofficially, I ask myself, why was he here? Why take such a chance? <laughs> Maybe there's no logic to his actions. Well, until he's recaptured, this section is on high alert for further hostile acts. To that end, you will each carry your personal weapon at all times. Am I understood? Perfectly. Okay, let's wrap it up. If it was him, he'd be long gone, Bonnet. Confession time, sir. He left this book on the train. That's a gun, yeah. It's not my cup of tea, sir. I started to read it, but, um... And then I thought prisoner's property. If he ever comes back, the visitors would raise the right act. Without a doubt. Can't keep a double murderer from his reading matter. No, sir. What's all this? Uh, some sort of shorthand, sir. Pittman's? No, sir. Uh, Samuel Pepys invented his own. Thank you. I'll pass it on to the CID. No, not sir. just yet. It's me he phones. Yes, sir.
personnel side to Green Street Gas Works, where the attacker eluded police and dogs and a helicopter. The officer, whose eardrums were perforated in the attack, is now recovering in hospital. Crime reporter Nick Bevin was at CID headquarters. This is Detective Inspector Daniel Ford, who led the murder inquiry, leading to the conviction of alleged MI5 agent Neil Byrne. Inspector Neil Byrne's now the most wanted man in Britain. Is this the man who brought Manchester to a standstill today with police deploying helicopters, roadblocks, and, I understand, an armed response unit? The man who injured PC Styrie uh, has been trained in unarmed combat and invasion techniques. Jesse, find out times of trains to Manchester, would you? Have you got clean things? Don't get personal. I'll pack you a sandwich. Uh, Bill, better get hold of the Deputy Chief Constable. Let Manchester CID know I'm on my way. Chief, the protocol is Senior Operations Officer contacts Manchester Admin in Ox, requesting formal agreement for you to investigate in their territory. It's going to take some time. Precisely, so sort the protocol. And Jesse, no tomatoes. It's Edith Ramsey. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm not decent. Oh, hey, don't worry me, love. I've seen it all before. What can I, uh, how can I help you? I'm just rustling up an omelette. Sorry? Omelette. Cheese and ham. I've got more eggs than I need. Care to uh, partake? <clears throat> Actually, I'm, I'm just off to work, Mrs. R. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks all the same. Another time, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. What, what are you doing, Neil? Trying to work out where you really are. are. He says to me, where... Mon, are you listening to me? Every word, Skanky. Where is the red light district? And you replied... And I replied, where is it not? For this is Babylon! <laughs> you bet that, Foxton. Right, I'm off. Foxton? Long story, Spanish. Tell me you want me back, Al. You want to do a late shift, 10 till 4? Yeah, whatever. You fancy Dean's Gate, Key Street, clubs and stuff? Yeah, no problem. Watch out for Martina. Oh, she? Six foot transvestite. Likes to do business in the back. <laughs> Bit too young for that kind of thing. Give Joe and Annie when they come over on Sunday. Joe likes peace trotters. Oh, you are kidding. Yeah. Used to be man as well for food. Now, crispy trotters in marmalade with raspy cures is the height of haughty cuisine. Yeah, well, crispy marmalade trotters are beyond me. 
And Sue Ling's off this weekend. How about a traditional roast, love? No, it's so predictable. Joe is very conservative. Look, I'll be on the butcher's counter. You always did have a sweet tooth, Jacko. Burn. What's your game? In your shoes, I'd be a Monty bloody Badeo by this time. In my shoes, you'd be doing exactly the same thing. With your money? You must be insane to stay around here. Yeah? Yeah. What's that, then? Two hundred big ones. I don't mind telling you, what you did was too much even for us bad boys. We've all got evil tempers, but a butcher's bony knife? <clears throat> That's hundred thousand. Just run, run that past me one more time, Jacko. Are you wired, Neil? Is that what this is, a fit-up, eh? Are you on the lamp, or is this just a... Copper showtime. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, uh, tell you what, I'll make you a deal, Jacko. Meaning? Meaning, tell me we'll kill them. Hey, just give me a whisper, I'll let you sleep nice. Write it down if you're worried. You killed them, Miles. We all know that. Or were you sleeping through your own trial? I'm after the truth, Jacko. For a man who's close to death, you got nerve, I'll end you there. This is just the beginning. Go back to prison, Burn. It's safer. Got salmon. If it's nice, we can eat it in garden. Come on. Home office visit Friday the sixteenth at five p.m. Don't they have homes to go to? and prisoners' friends for reform of the prison service, Monday the 19th at 9 a.m. You'd think it was our fault they break the bloody law in the first place. They blame society. <laughs> Greg? Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Greg. It's about that book I left on the train, Patagonia. It's burned. Does it have a trace of the governor's book? Notes in the margin. Some sort of shorthand. It's turned up. As soon as you're back, Patagonia is yours. You have a gut feeling about me, Mr. Greg. You were not an innocent man. That's what they say. Burn. Every day out of prison makes it worse for you. So tell me about worse. You're a young man, Neil. It's not the end of the road. So I send that from a cell on Rule 43. Fresh evidence could take you to the Lords. Yeah? Fresh evidence is what I jumped that train to find. Now, you train to negotiate, Mr. Greg. Next time I phone, have that book handy. Did you get it?
Who's gonna take care of it? You need to take care of it. DCS Wallace, DI Danny Ford. We failed Barnes call in the first place. Nice work. It was the uh, child's DNA was the clincher. And uh, for reasons of logic that escaped me, I find his file back on my desk. Don't worry, I'll find him. I can't imagine him uh, going back to your jurisdiction. We see he escaped on that batch, so it's my job to fill his collar in Manchester or Timbuktu. I'm uh, sorry they parked you in an interview room. Sales are taken, will they? Right, uh, I'll need an office, a couple of CID officers, access to your burn operation, uh, five minutes with the deputy chief constable out of courtesy, a car with a driver and a secure link with my own ops room and the governor at Garson Prison. Dialing for an outside line. I'll organise a swipe car so you can come in and out, but it won't cover op or intelligence areas. The carpool manager is on sick leave, but we do have a very good taxi service. The canteen's run on a chip, but not to visitors. Yes. To you, it's cash. A gas works. Sorry? Last seen entering a gas works. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then we lost him. Location? Sorry, I'm not with you. Have you heard, Mr. Ford, of Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would your boss like it if I pick up that phone and have them crawling all over this place in a three-week efficiency evaluation? And you can do all that with just the one phone call. Good morning, Home Office Inspector of Constabulary. Do you feel lucky? So, who play hardball in, um... In the sticks. So I was a Glasgow tech for 15 years, Guinea Jack and Skipper. Murder and robbery. Shit. I've had worse welcomes. I suppose we're both after the same thing. Uh-huh. You want a wee pub in Dumfries as well, eh? Here. Look at this. Now. See this? A man could remain quite still a couple of feet under the water and breathe through this. Did you ever see that old Sidney Poitier film? Mm, yeah. Right, evidence bag, forensics lab. You find burned saliva in that end. You have got samples of his DNA, I take it. 
And why that end? Because it's wet. Hello? We'll just be back five minutes. Be a treasure and come by later. Hey, got to see you on TV. Don't say it. Let's see if we don't cry much. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody crime watch. Any further with the book? Yeah, I'm working on it. For a copper's bloody knock. Time is not on your side. Well, like I said, Frank, it's nothing personal. You would have put me down the steps. I call that personal. Frank, you were thumbing a lift for a lagging. How many stiffs are propping up motorways and supermarkets? You cleaved your way to the top of the heap. Eh? How many illegal immigrants are down there amongst the addict and the seaweed after they've paid the three grand? <laughs> <laughs> Take a girl and stand it. Look at us. How did it come to this? What's brought you back here? Jack or Palmer thinks he paid me two big ones on about the time I went down. And I'm just wondering. Eh? Somebody been robbing the family business. What's it to you? You put him here. Yeah, sure. Blame me. Big Frank. Too tough to fall apart over a mere betrayal. Dad was running an investigation. I put a team in. Getting someplace too. Till your trial brought him down. Oh, I bet that were a godsend for somebody with their fingers in the till. Uh, the management's been lying about who the money goes to. Well, me of all people. We wanted you out. That was the push you needed. Oh, so you could use me? Yes. And? But you don't think I killed my own family? Son, we don't give a monkey's toss if you massacred an entire sodding orphanage. Those figures will do some good for you. And in the process, bring down those who've brought me to this. I'm going to rest now. And I suggest you go. That nurse will have phoned Joe Connor. He pays her pony a day. Get onto the roof. And Neil? Yeah. Crack those numbers or I'll top you myself. Excuse me. Get out of here. Our team in the blue van. Mm
Somebody's been in here. Mm -hmm. Recently. Um, could be the press. I need pictures for this new story. Burn at large in city. You attend the original crime scene? Yeah. Pretty grim. Only seven weeks to go. I'm lining up the prints for our gala opening. How about Liz and Hugh? <laughs> what exactly are you on? Liz and Hugh are glamour, international, jet set, the high life personified. They don't open places. Not yet, but that is the right image. Romantic interludes, upmarket weekends without the kids. Second honeymoons. Even married couples hanker after Liz and Hugh's lifestyle. Well, how about Richard and Judy? Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. The little shit! That murdering snout bastard! Like there uh, in the hypermarket. Gwendolyn's with me. I mean, quality time, for Christ's sake, I'll kill him! He was here, earlier today. Wait a minute. He's coming after us? Yeah. Is he mad? What are we running here? A kindergarten? I mean, why is it, humanly here, why is it that the most wanted man in England, Britta, do you mind, can find us? But we can't bloody find him. We should set a trap. Good, so set a trap. I want a word with Mr. Byrne. It's gun oil. Parker Hale 303, there's no mistake. Well, that's just dandy. My vote, we squash him like a bleeding bug. Really? Yeah. OK. Let's take a vote. We waste him. Agreed? Yeah. Right. Next problem. City Surveyor's report. He <laughs> won't green light the Arndale project. One of these days, we're going to run out of bloody surveyors. The hunt for the escaped murderer, Neil Byrne, is now centred in Manchester. Byrne, 38, has been confirmed as the man who attacked a police officer yesterday morning much. outside an infant school. Rotherham-born Byrne, a former government agent, escaped from a train earlier this week. Take people way. Now, take me. You ever been to Rotherham? Pass through. You? Brother's got a corner shop there. Yeah? Westfield Street? All right. So-so. Works all the hours God gave him. Where you want to go? We don't want a mini car. Why, oh, looking for work? I'll never get this right. Look, oh, lads. What exactly do you want? Exactly. I'll tell you what we exactly want. The money. What money? All the money!
I hate this bloody life. It's a half-life. One of these days you'll forget who you really are. Lovely morning. Yeah, yeah, could be a scorcher. I, I, I hope you didn't mind. Mind what? Me asking you to supper. Oh no, no, it's uh, it's very kind. Uh, I had to work. <laughs> <laughs> you um, have you ever tried them ball in the bag curries? Ball in the bag? Yeah, sure, I live off them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you might. It's um, well, I. I'm just making some pot roast for lunch and, uh, well, maybe, seeing as you, you were nights. Pot roast? Won't miss it for the world. What time? Oh, um, say about one. One o'clock. I'll be there. <laughs> Better get it started then. Pot roast. Pot roast. Arsehole wrote this. Listen to this. Escaped lifer Neil Byrne is suspected by police of murdering three other little girls in the north of England. The first toddler was found strangled in 1996. So on. You never mentioned any of this to me. Well, it's rubbish. Byrne killed his wife and daughter and went down for it. But serial killer? Not a chance. Reporter's byline is Rod Manson. Does that ring any bells? Uh, usual low life. Started out in local sport. Hangs around with quote unquote the underworld. Pays a bit of dropsy to bent coppers. Sounds like a regular citizen's shite. Well now, Rod, come a long way from staking out massage parlours in town councillors, haven't you? Neil Byrne. Let's go for a drive. A drive? Where? You know, some place we can talk. I know you, Manson. You don't have to wait to invent this. Who fed you the story? Nobody. Well, that's too bad for you, then. Meaning? Whoever wants this story put about, I want him. And if that turns out to be you and you alone, then we're gonna have to go somewhere quiet. Quiet? Yeah, you've just won yourself an exclusive with a sadistic killer. Or was it? I can't tell you, Neil. The truth is, I'm more terrified of him than I am of you. Oh, we'll soon fix that. Crackling. <laughs> Just think it out loud. <laughs> Can't hear you. Gebert. Alan Gebert. <sighs> Shut up. 
shouldn't smoke for a while. That seat's taken, mate. So, Alan, it's been a long time. Why am I not surprised to see you? Just had a chat with Rod Manson. Is that why you're taking this risk? You miffed at your press coverage. He paid him two grand in a bit to put that shit in his paper. That's all right. Makes my job a lot simpler. What job's that? Finding unkilled Alison and Sarah. And do me a favour. Don't say you thought it were me. Mate, I've never had any doubt it were you. As for why I feed that serial killer story to the papers, had you worked that out? Surprise me. You see Rod Manson's byline. You're bound to have a word with Rod. Rod, not the world's greatest hero, blabs it with me in back of it. And now here I am. Here you are. You're a dead man, Neil. Not nice knowing you. Here. Let's shoot us, boys. We've got him. Dies cast, Miss Fleming. Step aside. Back off. You? Get in. You were safe in prison. Oh. What are you doing this, Annie? You're not much used to his dad. Say it turns out to be Joe, robbing the family store. No, Joe has his faults, but he's a man of honor. Enjoys the respect too much to thieve from his own. So why not tell him the numbers? 
I bow to my father in that. So if push comes to shove, you destroy the hand that feeds you? I'm only in his bed to survive. It's not what I wanted. OK, I'll get the number sorted, yeah? I need something from you in return. What's that? Well, just suppose, for a, for a laugh, I'm not the sort of bloke to murder his wife and child. There's something I'm missing, Annie. And I, I don't know what it is yet. I need your eyes and ears, Annie. Thank you. 